That's the last upper cabinet. The only problem is that back piece and that back piece, they're not finished. So we can't actually assemble the upper cabinets yet. And that's what we're working on today. In case you're just joining us, we are working on building this set of cabinets. We're well on our way. In case you've missed it, jump back. There's quite a few videos in this series where we start off by cutting all of the stock for the uh, boxes and then we worked on getting those assembled using pocket hole joinery. Then we worked on cutting all of the material for the drawers, and then we worked on getting all the dado joinery done to assemble the drawers and to put the backs on the upper cabinets. In the last video, we worked on this joinery for these drawers, and I'm super happy with how they turned out. The joinery is super tight. They're not screwed or glued or anything right now. So where we're at now, we can't screw and glue the drawers together and we can't finish assembling the upper cabinets because we're using an unfinished face grade or cabinet grade plywood. So what we need to work on today is getting everything to an equal level of finish. The drawers are obviously going to need to be washable and the inside of the cabinets probably will need to be cleanable, but also for appearance purposes. If we leave it unfinished like that, it's going to get watermarks and it's just going to look oogie. I will admit right now, if I'm a bad cabinet maker, I'm an even worse wood finisher. It's just, it's a skill that I've never really worked on at all, 0%. Um, if you've been watching our channel for a while, you know we had a lot of fun trying to paint our man basket project recently, and it went horrible, like triple double extra horrible bad. And we want to avoid that with this project. So we're gonna try something maybe a little unconventional, meaning it's not probably what a professional would do, but I'm hoping it helps us avoid a catastrophe on the cabinet project. So to start off with, we're going to sand each piece. And I picked up three different grits, 120, 150, and 220. I don't know if this is the right way to do this, but here's what we're gonna do. <laughs> we're gonna test one piece doing a 120, 150, and a 220, and just see what happens. Something tells me that we might be able just to do 150 and 220, but I don't know, and all you professionals out there are screaming right now, like, don't do it like that. Um, we're gonna just figure this out. What we wanna do is minimize the amount of effort that goes into one piece of wood. So right now we're looking at a minimum of three steps for sanding. Uh, if we wanted to get it ultra smooth, I think we should add a wet rag here, and then that will raise the grain ever so slightly once we're done sanding. Once it's dry, come back with another 220, and that will give us a pretty stinking smooth finish. So we're basically, we'll pretend this tape, this tape is the wet rag. So we're at one, two, three, four steps, five steps. So we've sanded it again. Then we obviously have to remove all the dust. And then we need to seal the edges of the wood. Let's pick on this piece of wood right here. So this edge is, for example, is gonna be exposed. And we don't just wanna lacquer that. I feel like because it's end grain, we should probably seal that up. And so I picked up a product called Sanding Sealer. And it's also a base for your lacquers anyway. There's one of these for urethane and one for lacquer. I feel like this is a product that would be good to apply with a brush to the end grain. I might be totally wrong about that. And now you understand why I'm intimidated by finishing wood. So we're at one, two, three, four, five. There's six steps, but we probably need to put two to three coats, I, I imagine, of this on here. Not one coat's gonna do the job. So there's like eight steps. And then if we go with a one-step finish, which is what we could do with this aerosol lacquer. Yeah, this stuff's gonna smell amazing. It says it dries in 30 minutes and you can recoat. We're probably gonna need at least five coats. I think it says on here at least two or three. Because this wood is raw and it's not already sealed, I don't think we're gonna get away with three coats. I think there's gonna be like five, but I could be wrong. So that would be a one step. So we'd be at like nine steps. And if we chose to go with a two-step system, one that has a sanding sealer that we could put maybe two coats on and then we could put three coats of finish. So there's five steps and this is five steps. So if we chose to do all sides of this wood, which would be ridiculous, that would be about 10 steps for every side. There's 10, there's 10, you do the math. It's an insane amount of work. 
This is one of those reasons that melamine shines. It's a finished product. As long as you don't screw it up in the cutting and the joinery, you're done. Dun, 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 and it's instantly finishable. Uh, my problem is that in my experience, it always chips and flakes during joinery and it just looks terrible. I'm sure there's ways to fix all that stuff. I just don't want to deal with it. Plus, I kind of like the look of the wood and I feel like it's a little bit higher quality looking. If that makes any sense, I suppose that's more just a matter of perception because melamine can be in a high-end home just like wood. We're clearly making a lot of work for ourselves. So what I think probably makes sense is to do the insides of the drawers, duh, and the bottom of the drawer, but not to do the outside of the drawer or the underside of the bottom. I feel like those can probably stay natural wood. They're not a visual portion of the cabinet and hypothetically they shouldn't get any use. I guess I'll tell you after we've lived with them for a little while and if they are starting to look oogie, we'll have to do something about it. One of the major challenges with this project is dust. We're obviously living in the house, so we need to keep the dust to a bare minimum. So we've been using the ShopSmith system. We got it kind of cleaned up in one of our first videos. We ran this through the washing machine, got that tuned up. It's been doing an okay job, but at the end of every day, there's definitely sawdust over here. But I will say it is a percentage of the amount of sawdust that we're creating. And so far, we really haven't had any sawdust to amount to anything building up on any of the other surfaces. So that means whatever we're doing is working. I do have this shop back with a HEPA filter in it, and we've been using that for kind of the final cleanup just because it's got such a good filter to keep that really fine dust uh, out of the air. I suppose we could go into a long conversation about which sanding tool makes the most sense. We've got a belt sander, we've got a palm sander that's got a square, we've got a orbital random sander. There's so many ways to do this stuff. And of course, there's always the shopsmith. The shopsmith itself has three different sanding discs and it has a belt sander. So we could do lots of different things for this type of surface, but something, I don't know why, something tells me to use the random orbital. I don't know why that is. I think the belt sander is really aggressive and you also risk uh, making like streaks in the wood, if that makes any sense, because it's one directional where the random orbital shouldn't leave any marks in the wood as long as we're not too aggressive. And I suppose why we wouldn't use the square orbital sander is because square sheets of sandpaper suck. <laughs> so hopefully we should be able to use this one. Oh, and there's just one more reason. This has dust collection built into it. So these sanding pads are built, they're hook and loop pads, and they just go on with Velcro, very easy to install. And they line up with the holes in the bottom of this pad. And there's a fan in there that creates suction to collect dust. So hopefully we can get this hooked to the vacuum. So all this sanding doesn't ruin all the work that we've been doing to keep the dust down in here. And I suppose, in full disclosure, the other problem is gonna be having somewhere to lay all this stuff out. I don't wanna do this outside. It just so happens that after days and days and days of blistering hot sun, we're getting a bunch of rain right now. And uh, that happened to me the other day when I was just finishing one stinking piece for that cabinet over there. So uh, we're gonna have to do this inside. We're gonna run the house fan in here, which will help to exhaust all the air. We're not gonna spend a bunch of time setting up a booth. Uh, we'll just see how it goes. If it gets to be too much, I'm not sure what we'll do. We may have to take this stuff elsewhere to finish it. This is gonna be a persistent problem for us because we're living here and we just don't want all these fumes flying around the house. Well, it took me a little bit to figure out how to get my sander hooked to my vacuum, but I managed to scrounge parts from two different vacuums and get it hooked up to the shop vac, which worked good. So the 120 grit took this down really fast. It actually feels way better, but you can still see that the grain is actually quite rough. And if we try to put a finish on that, you're gonna see all that roughness in the grain. I just realized that I forgot to kinda position one of the problems or challenges for today, and that is the thickness of the face veneer on this plywood. Obviously, the core on this wood is very thick. This is not a 12-ply birch. Rather, this looks like a 5-ply, which has three really large core plies, and then a very, very thin face veneer on both sides. If we're too aggressive, anywhere on this face will sand right through that veneer. We're using a finished grade sandpaper, so it's kind of hard to over sand. 
but that's one of the challenges today is to keep an eye on this veneer on each piece and make sure that it's not thin somewhere for fear that we sand right through the face. So that 120 grit went really quick. And I think because we're only gonna be sanding the one side of these pieces, I think it makes sense to do the 120 and then switch to the 150 and then finally to the 220. So what I think I'll do is I've kind of set up a couple of work areas is I'm gonna move the tape to the side that we're not going to finish. That way we're sanding and finishing the side without the tape on it. Um, I think that makes sense for keeping things organized. I'm gonna try as I take these drawers apart to mark them. That way it's really easy to put them back together instead of having to kind of figure it out on the other end. Um, and then there's just a couple of pieces from the upper cabinets that we need to refinish or finish uh, the top of a two-sided piece of wood. So what I'm gonna do is put my head down and try to get through all the 120 grits. And I think what I'll do is just kind of make myself a workstation, kind of stack my materials on this side, work through the 120s and put them over here. And then in theory, I should just be able to go back around and do the 150 and so on. I feel like doing one drawer all the way through, let's do the 150 and the 220, and then see kind of where that puts us with the finish. Then we'll feel better about going forward on all the rest of these drawers. Well, I'm sure you guys can't see that on the camera. It's really hard to show, but listen to this. I'd say that's pretty dang good. Um, of course, there is some grain to this wood, and I think to get rid of the grain, one of two things is gonna happen. We're either gonna have to sand off the veneer practically or get really deep into that veneer, which comes with risk, or uh, lacquer it like really heavily which makes no sense to do. I think this is good enough. Uh, it's nice and smooth, it's smooth to the hand, and I think when we put a good coat of lacquer on there, it's gonna add a smoothness to it that's just gonna feel good, and it's gonna be super cleanable. Um, I did touch sand the edges. Don't know why I didn't think of doing that, but that's something that I think we need to do on the, on the top edges, just so, you know, if you touch them or something like that, they feel smooth, they don't feel rough from the table saw. I mean, I don't care what your table saw is. It doesn't make it 220 grit smooth. We obviously didn't do all the pieces. I just did the sides. I think the same thing is true. I think we should move forward on maybe sanding and then edge sealing and then lacquering, maybe one drawer at a time. I know I said like, let's go for it, but I'm kind of feeling like we should just do one at a time. I think the or random orbital may not be the very best thing for edge sanding. You can kind of see here where the sander dove just a tiny bit when it was spinning and it chewed just a little bit. I think those little things like that, even with a fine grit sandpaper, you know, that this may be the place for the belt sander, like on the shopsmith or something. That way you can just hold the board on a table and just run that across the paper. Um, I, might, I might do that. We might set that up later if this is kind of giving me fits or if I'm kind of diving off the sides. But yeah, this orbital wants to jump off the edge where on this surface, it's absolutely fantastic. I feel like raising the grain did help. I could actually feel it after uh, just seeing that with a wet rag, you could kind of feel a little bit more roughness. I guess, listen to that. Well, I guess here's, here's a rough piece. This is a hardwood faced plywood. So hypothetically, if we drop down to say maybe a hundred grit or maybe an 80 grit, we could get this thing to be glass smooth. And I don't know that's what we really want. I know that the interior of the cabinets is kind of that way. It is sanded 
just blazingly smooth. And the finish is super smooth, but it's not a high gloss finish. So anyway, this is a whole different conversation about smoothness and gloss and stuff like that. Let's try this drawer and we'll just see what happens. As I was sanding, I've been kind of thinking about whether to even deal with this stuff or not. And according to the can of this spray lacquer, it is its own sealer, whatever that means. I don't even fully understand what sealing means because when you spray this with a poly or a lacquer, in my mind, I guess it seals, but maybe, maybe there's some secret juju chemistry thing going on that maybe we all don't know about. I just, having spent years in the chemical industry, I know that a lot of companies use Lay people speak like sanding sealer to sell another product that basically does the same thing as the other product. So for this, we're gonna use this one step clear uh, lacquer and it's in a semi-gloss, which I don't think we want anything glossy. We do want it to be cleanable. So I was a little hesitant to use anything in the satin range. And like I said, the instructions on this say that we should be able to do one product. It says no sanding between coats. It doesn't, it doesn't say no sand, it just says it's not needed. And then it says it'll provide an even smooth beautiful surface. Um, you can apply another coat without having to remove any lacquer. And it says it can be used over bare wood and it's ready to recoat in 30 minutes. So let's give this a try. Hopefully we can get a one-step process to get us, give us the finish we're looking for. So I guess we're gonna use one of these drawers as a test case, and um, if it goes badly, I deserve it, really. I should probably be doing this on a piece of test wood, but today, this is what I wanna get done, and so, well, we're gonna take that risk. Boosh. That's pretty heavy spray there. Spray can. So this is super consistent with my experience that the first about three coats or so, they just disappear into the wood. And I feel like that's the sealer part of this whole product. And it's okay, like the wood doesn't really physically look that different than it did when we started. And I think that's pretty, that's, that's to be expected. I expect three coats to basically just vanish. And then you'll start to slowly see kind of shiny spots. And it kind of looks blotchy, which will make you kind of panic at first. But as you add coats, it definitely starts to build and you start to get the gloss that you would expect. So the can says 30 minutes between steps. So what I'm probably gonna do is just jump straight to sanding and try to get a bunch of sanding done while I'm waiting on this stuff to cure. 30 minutes between coats is great, uh, but it sucks for today because I just don't have like three days to finish these drawers. This is why we bought a pre-finished plywood. This is what we're saving ourselves from having to deal with and the smell and, and, and all the fumes and all that stuff. So if you can, try to buy pre-finished wood or go with melamine, I guess. That's always an option. blows me away how, how the grain will jump up if you just hit it with a little bit of water. Listen to that. And then let's sand just a little section and just compare. All right, give this a listen. And that's just from getting that wet with a rag and then hitting it one more time with 220.
respirator. I spent a month in that respirator behind my sawmill. So we're up to six coats on these pieces, which are the very first pieces that we coated. And we're at five on the ones in the back and five on the bottom. Uh, what I'm noticing is a couple of things. One, I don't know that I did a great job sanding these two. When I sanded it with 220, wiped it with water, dried it and then sanded it again, I probably should have hit it with the tack cloth, but I didn't. I touched it with the wet rag again, and I think I just raised the grain again. So this tack cloth is just sticky. It's kind of kind of like an adhesive uh, muslin or something. I'm not really sure what it is. And that's what it's for, is basically paint prep to remove the last little dust from your finest grit of sandpaper. So in the back here, I used the tack cloth and we're only at five coats and those look fantastic. I probably won't touch those again with another coat. I feel like these took more. I feel like you can see the, the, the depth of the wood. Uh, it's definitely sanded to 220, but I feel like maybe I didn't sand it enough. And then when I touched it with the water, I think I made it more rough. And so I think it took more lacquer to get that sealed. This bottom, I did not touch it with the rag when I was done, but I think I did not sand it enough. It's a big piece and I think it's tempting to shortcut the sanding process because you can see, I mean, you can see the grain kind of in there. It's, it's a little bit deep. It doesn't look bad, but that's what I would kind of expect from an aerosol. It definitely does not look super uniform to my eye. And that's because where the grain is rougher, I think a, it can't create kind of a seal across the top. So anywhere it's super smooth or super hard, it's gonna be shiny. And then where it gets rough, it's gonna kind of look dull. And it's not that there's not an equal amount of lacquer on there, it just, it just looks different to the eye. And I think the only way to get rid of that is to lacquer heavily or sand ridiculously. I've been hitting the edge of this each time that I spray it. And I'll say it feels sealed, like to your finger. Like if you put water on that, it's not gonna soak in, but it doesn't look very sealed. But this is a semi-gloss, so I guess I'm, I'm scratching my head and uh, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know if I wanna spend an entire day, not today, screwing around with finishes, kind of playing with this sanding sealer and brushing lacquer on there versus spraying it. And this is like a whole entire career in its own. Even if you can build cabinets, that doesn't mean that you understand how to apply the finishes to them. And this is definitely out of my wheelhouse. So what I've been doing differently in the meantime is I've been sanding probably three times longer than I did on the others. There's actually just a little bit of luster to the wood and that's just sanding. So that tells you that we're getting a much finer sand. I don't know that that's gonna make the finish better. I guess we'll have to urethane or lacquer one of these to find out but i've been putting a lot more effort into sanding just trying oh, there you go just trying to get these things to be super smooth or as smooth as you can get with 220 grit of course if we wanted to go smoother uh, a we could either sand it down farther with like a 60 or 80 grit and then come up to 220 or at this point we could just hit it with 400 and we would probably end up with an even higher gloss so hopefully this will take less lacquer and we'll also end up with a more uniform finish, hopefully. Well, now that it's put together as a drawer, it looks totally different. Look at the depth. That looks like such a different drawer. Look at all that grain, holy smokes, guys. In fact, I feel like it just looks fantastic. Unsanded, unfinished. And then the inside, look at that, isn't that beautiful? Holy cow. So I guess I'm feeling a little more optimistic about what's going on here. I think sitting flat on their back in the harsh light, you know, it's, it's, it's easy to judge. Um, but once you kind of put it together as a drawer and look at it in context, it looks a lot better. I guess as I'm standing here, I'm kind of thinking to myself, do we really want the outside of the drawers to look like this? I mean, I guess when you pull a drawer out, you do see the drawer, don't you? I was thinking, oh, you're only gonna see the inside. 
but because we have full extension slides, you're definitely gonna see this side of the drawer. This, this if, if it's the front, let's say, is actually gonna be covered by the drawer front, so you'll never see that side of the wood. There's really no point in finishing it, and I guess you'll never really see the back either. Uh, so the question is, do we finish the sides and make them look more beautiful like that. I think what makes sense is to set this to the side. One thing I've kind of learned about paint is you don't judge the paint before it's dry. And by dry, I don't mean dry to the touch, I mean cured. There's something about the chemistry that definitely changes as it cures. It just seems to kind of smooth out. So let's maybe not jump to any conclusions with this one. But I will say that I feel pretty good about how everything's coming together as far as the sealing of the edges and all that stuff. So let's set it to the side, we'll move on, and um, otherwise I'd say we're good to stick with this one product. Instead of adding a bunch of extra layers to this task, um, I can tell you that this one drawer probably took about three quarters of this can. I think that's multi-dimensional. One, like I said, I don't know that I did a good job getting these prepped. Let's do one more drawer with a new can, and I'll tell you if it took more or less to get that done. Um, I'm waiting for Alyssa to get back. I want her opinion on whether we should knock the sides out. I also texted a friend to see what their opinion is. They work in the cabinet industry, and so they probably would know better. We'll, we'll wait for that feedback. Um, so for right, right now, let's get to work on more lacquering. That's definitely gonna be the slowest part of this whole process. Oh good, you're back. I'm back. So question on finishing these drawers. So this is my first drawer, it's a little rough. Um, so basically that's the inside finish, but the question I have is do we want to finish the side since we have full open slides and they're gonna be technically visible. I could go either way. I'm pretty sure most homes don't have them finished. I don't know if it's common. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm thinking in our RV, nothing's finished. It's all pretty rough. Yeah. We won't regret doing it yep. and all said and done if it's unfinished we might wish like oh i really i really wish those were done yeah i also feel that you don't leave a drawer open you open it a little bit grab what you need and close it yeah and when it's out you're not paying attention to the sides not really and it, it is the garage yep you know true yeah basically there's eight drawers which we're, means we're talking about 16 sides i feel like i'm doing a lot better job sanding so like that's only two coats of lacquer yep. on that piece well, and yeah. it's looking why, why a lot can't better you just go, like two coats lacquer like do you that's, have to do the all six like it doesn't have to be shiny well that's a good point i think just, i don't think it needs bit. to be a ton yeah it just needs to be enough that the that there's a uniform finish on it and that it's got some sort of seal so that's, that's I think a good that's point a good medium yeah that's a good point so do the sanding Maybe see where we're at with a couple coats of lacquer. I think we'll both feel better about that. That way if you drip water or something on it, it doesn't make a water stain. Yeah. And it looks oogly. So. Yeah, a little more cleanable. Okay, thanks for the feedback. Finally happened guys. We found a thin spot. Check it out. Not cool. That's a spot where the veneer was super thin. I mean I might have over sanded that. I'll take some responsibility a little bit there but I've been sanding this whole piece and haven't had any problems yet. You can see there's still quite a bit of veneer there. So I think what happened is that's just a thin spot. Basically when they sanded this at the factory there's probably a thick part in the in the panel in there and then when they sanded it they sanded the face to pretty thin but they didn't sand through it and as soon as i hit it with 120 grit bam so the good news is huh, 
we can flip this over and this will be the drawer bottom. Probably need to watch out on this side that we don't over sand. I haven't, this is only 120 grit. So <laughs> imagine what would happen if we got down to the uh, 150 and the 220. At least we've got another side that we can use. Although I already put a bunch of time into that side. So I thought I'd share that because that was a concern I had early on is that face veneer. It looks thick on the edges, but there are, can be spots in the panel where there's probably a flaw or something in the core. And so when they sand it, man, they sand that face so thin, you wouldn't know it until you hit it with sandpaper. So you remember the early drawer that we worked on and we had six coats of lacquer? Yeah, so I definitely kind of figured out that I wasn't putting enough time into the four or the 220 grit. It was not an issue of not enough 120 or 150, but more the, the 220. Once you spend that time with the 220, it's really easy to get that level of finish with only four coats of lacquer. Definitely spending the time with the 220, hugely important to getting a good finish. All these look absolutely fantastic. So less work and less time too. And last, the super embarrassing one. Let's see if this is, let's see if this is a dry. I think this might be one of the, oh, there it is. So we ran into, three more spots of thin veneer. And look at that, we blew right through that face. I'm not sure if this is entirely the thin veneer or if it might be just me being too aggressive with the sandpaper. And so again, I had to flip the piece over, sand the back side, and now this will be the show side in this drawer. I'm super tired, guys. This, I'm going on my eighth hour on this project, I knew sanding and finishing would take time. I feel like this is a process that is mostly time. The bad news is, it's not done yet. So Alyssa and I talked about flipping the sides over, sanding and at least two coating the sides. So that still needs to be done. And the backs for these upper cabinets are not done yet. So we've still got at least probably another three hours or so of sanding and lacquering to do, but I'm super happy with how this is turning out. I was super scared going in today because I have nothing but bad experiences with finishes. So I'm gonna get some sleep and hopefully we can pick this project up tomorrow or soon and we'll get all the sanding and the finishing done and then hopefully we can move on to assembling the drawers and the upper cabinets. Oh, one thing, I promised you guys I would tell you how much less lacquer the well sanded uh, drawer took and the answer is about a quarter, quarter less. So it's definitely worth spending the time with the fine grit to get a good finish before you lacquer.